Hola mi gente, it's August. I'm back again with another video. Now, today's gonna be a little bit different because I don't have a cameraman. My cameraman and fiance Chris had his wisdom teeth taken out today and I'm not gonna push him to try to sit here and record a video. So, might be a little shaky, might be a little different, but we are gonna get it together. I know it's been a little minute since I shared a recipe with y'all. So today we are making something very easy, very simple. This is a good weeknight meal when you come home and the baby's hungry and your man or your woman's hungry. Something real easy to just whip up and uh, throw together. We are making picadillo. Picadillo is a Cuban, Puerto Rican, Dominican dish. You know, everybody does it a little bit different, but it's basically just seasoned ground meat and you can eat it on its own. You can eat it with rice and beans. You can use it as a filling for tacos or empanadas or pastelon or I have even seen some people throw with some noodles. So you can eat it all types of ways. This is a dish that you can get real creative with. And so we could go ahead and get to it. But before that, y'all know I like to showcase local and black owned businesses on my channel, usually through t-shirts. And so I would do injustice because the person that runs this uh, company is someone very near and dear to my heart, <laughs> a good sorrow of mine. Today I'm going to showcase a company called HBCU Palante. The purpose of HBCU Palante is to educate Black and Latinx uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers about HBCUs and just kind of bring awareness to them. So I have my blue and white HBCU definition shirt. Like always, I'm going to put a link in the description to her website that we can check out her website, check out her mission. You can sign up for newsletters and you can sign up to her store to buy great HBCU shirts like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, for this recipe, you are going to need one pound of ground meat. Um, it can be whatever type of ground meat you want. Uh, beef, pork, chicken, turkey. If you got it like that, lamb, buffalo, um, whatever you have. All I had was ground beef, so that's what I'm gonna use. One uh, tablespoon of sasson. There, besides Goya, because I know a lot of us are boycotting Goya, including myself. Um, Badia makes uh, sazon with culantro y achote. There's also a nor, or you could just do a homemade version. One tablespoon of sofrito or one cube, if you do like me and freeze them in my one of my previous videos. A half a teaspoon each of chipotle chili powder, or you could just use regular, and oregano. About a teaspoon of adobo seasoning half a teaspoon of cumin and black pepper about two garlic cloves i minced mine here but you could also crush them mash them however you want it um about you can use about a tablespoon of tomato paste and then also this last ingredient is optional traditionally in cuba they would use olives i'm not a fan of olives um they would use pickled olives i'm not a fan of olives though so i use okra Something I love. This is pickled okra. And I have a little bit of the juice there. That's going to kind of give it a little tangy flavor. All right. So I have my pot heating. Um, it's at about a medium high heat. And I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the bottom to start browning and sauteing the meat. All right, folks. I use my good old avocado oil in the pot. Make sure the pot is hot. Depending on what type of meat and how much fat content it has. Um, is going to determine how much are you so like you have something like the lean ground beef or the lean turkey You'll need a little bit more Okay, we'll just go ahead and Put that in there I might have to just come back. Okay, once you get the meat in there, you're gonna want to take a Spoon and kind of chop it up. The purpose of this is by the end after the meat's cooked and we add all the seasonings It's gonna be real fine. There's not gonna be real big chunks of meat and we're going to kind of layer the seasonings on top of each other. So the first thing we're going to add is our sofrito. And we're just going to kind of mix that in. It's going to um, melt and saute as the meat cooks. Like I said, this is going to be very quick. Because with a heat high like it is, um, you can even go higher if you need it quicker. Um... It cooks very fast. So like I said, you can keep mixing it. You're going to keep breaking up those big chunks. 
and make sure to stir around that sofrito cube so it can kind of get everywhere. That way all your meat is gonna season, okay? You're gonna do this until the sofrito is melted and then I'm gonna show you what's gonna be the next step for seasoning. Okay, now that my sofrito cube is mostly melted, I'm going to add in my adobo and my sazon. And just go ahead and mix that real quick. Remember, as you mix, go ahead and start breaking up some of them big pieces. Whew, I ain't know it's so hard to just record with one hand. But here we are. <laughs> okay. Once that's mixed, at this time you will also go ahead and add your tomato paste. If you don't have any tomato paste, you can use about half a cup of tomato sauce that's typically what i use i just use the tomato sauce but i'm out so i'm gonna use the rest of this tomato paste i'm trying to get the last little bit now that the tomato paste is in there we're going to add the comino and the black pepper the cumin and black pepper now i know what you're thinking why can't you just throw this all in at the same time? You can. It's just not going to come out right. And I don't know why. Maybe it's a science cooking thing. I don't know. But I've cooked Picadillo where I just threw everything in at the same time. It just didn't come out right. It was off. So just go ahead and layer it. You see how it's starting to kind of get a fine, almost minced meat-like? That's what you want. All right, now for this particular batch, I'm actually making this so I can make empanadas. But like I said, you could uh, serve it over rice. I have a Mexican rice, Aldo's Mexicano recipe on here that you can pair that with, with um, some black beans on the side. If you ain't got fresh black beans, just uh, saute some sofrito on the pot, open up a can of black beans and heat that up. And there's your black beans and that's your meal, okay? The chipotle chili powder and the oregano. All right, now the meat is pretty much cooked and it's pretty minced. It's minced to the consistency that I like. And so that's pretty much it. That's it, just like that. I'm gonna add the garlic and gonna let it saute just for a little bit. You particularly always want to add garlic towards the end. Let it cook a little bit so that raw garlic taste can come out. But if you cook garlic for too long, it turns bitter. And so you want to put it in, let it cook for about, you know, a minute or so in there. Let the flavors come out, but you don't want to cook it for too long because bitter garlic is just, it's not the wave. It's not what's up. So you're just gonna, you know, mix, mix, mix. You know, as you mix, if you come across a big piece, you know, just go ahead, chop it up a little bit. There's also um, a great filling for tacos. So if you want something quick, you know, just heat you up some tortillas. I have some right over here. Just heat you up some, put that in, you know, chop up some onions and cilantro, put that over, maybe some pineapple and you good. Like I said, this is a real quick, easy meal. It don't take that long to cook. And it's so versatile, you could do so much with it. Now that the uh, garlic's been in there for about a minute, finally, this is gonna be your very last ingredients, the pickled okra or the olives. Whichever one you want, if you add. And then like I said, a little bit of that juice, cause it gives a little, just a little bit of that tang, tanginess to it that I like. Like I said, if you don't like okra, you don't have to put it, if you, you're not a fan of olives, you don't have to put it, you know. But make sure if you do, that this is not fresh okra, this is pickled okra. And same thing for the olives, put in pickled olives, um, because that's what gives that tanginess. And it's not gonna cook for long, and this is pretty much gonna be it. All right, so now your picadillo is done. I'm gonna go ahead and plate it. 
And like always, once your, the meat is all the way cooked and, you know, right before you plate it, just go ahead, give it a taste test. Taste it for salt, seasoning. You know, you can add a little bit more adobo if you feel it needs or, you know, if you're like me and you like a little bit of spice, put a few drops of hot sauce or uh, a little dash of cayenne in there, you know, because everybody got a little different flavors. All right, folks, so there is our delicious picadillo. Like I said, you can put this on top of rice, white rice, arroz mexicano, pair it with some beans, whatever type of beans you have, um, or use it in a filling for tacos, empanadillas, you know, whatever it is. Picadillo is so quick and so versatile. It's so great to use. And on top of that, if you have leftovers, you can make different things so you don't get bored with it. All right. Thank y'all for joining me again for another episode. And as always, buen provecho.